Hi there. So this video is going to cover a few P53 target genes. Now, as you recall, P53, its main function in the cell is as a transcription factor. So transcription factors bind promoters to activate gene transcription, and P53 can bind many promoters. In fact, there are over a hundred well-characterized P53 target genes, which means when P53 is activated in the cell, it becomes stable, it enters the nucleus, and it can assemble to bind promoters, P53 can turn many genes on. And these genes are going to help the cell respond to the stressful situation it is, uh, it is in. Re recall P53 is activated, stabilized, when cells are in under stress, either DNA damage or low nutrient or oxy, uh, oxygen levels or um, abnormal cell cycle movement. And so there are over 100 well-characterized um, P53 target genes, and I want to cover a couple of them in this video. You can break them down. You can group these target genes into genes involved into different cellular processes. So the first group of genes we're going to talk about are genes involved in cell cycle arrest. So if there's some cellular stress, the first thing the cell would like to do is stop movement through the cell cycle um, because either you don't have enough resources to complete it successfully or your DNA possibly is damaged and you don't want to incorporate that damage into the daughter cells. So we're going to see some cell cycle arrest genes turned on. Uh, the second group of genes um, that we're going to talk about are DNA repair genes. So if there's some DNA damage, P53 will help turn on genes to repair that damage. The third group of genes we'll talk about are genes involved in apoptosis. So, uh, and remember that second P is silent, it's not apoptosis, it's apoptosis, like in pneumonia or pterodactyl or psoriasis. If their damage is too great to the cell, then cells can trigger apoptosis via P53, turning on pro-apoptotic genes. And the final one that we're going to talk about is uh, genes that P3 turns on, one very specific one that it allows for feedback regulation. If cells have addressed the stressful event and want to now go back to going through the cell cycle, they need to inactivate P53. And so uh, that's probably going to be a separate video, um, part two of this video. But let's talk about these first three categories of genes. And the ones that we're going to talk about are... Um, well characterized, uh, but there are a lot of P3 uh, target genes that um, there's consensus over, and then some there still there's not consensus over. But we're going to talk about the ones that are, I think, uh, relevant um, to our discussions of understanding the role of P53 in cancer. So let's talk about cell cycle arrest genes. So again, if there's some sort of cellular stress, P53 will become stable and active, bind promoters and turn genes on, turn genes on that can stop the cell cycle. So let's see some, let's see three examples of genes that are turned on by P53. So one gene, uh, the name of the gene is CDKN1A, and it codes for a protein called P21, also known as WAF1. And if you are familiar with cell cycle control, cyclins and CDKs, you recall what this protein does. P21 is a CDK inhibitor. So if you recall from earlier videos or your understanding of the cell cycle, um, there are proteins called CDKs, cyclin-dependent kinases, that, uh, such as CDK2 or 4 or 6. And these cyclin-dependent kinases bind to cyclins, like, such as cyclin E or cyclin D. And when cyclins and CDKs interact, that activates the kinase activity of the CDK, allowing the CDK to phosphorylate its substrate, such as RB, the retinoblastoma protein, and that allows through progress for progression through the cell cycle. So when CDKs are inhibited, the cell cycle will stop. And in fact, that's what P53 does. P53 turns on P21. P21 will inhibit CDKs, and CDKs will unable, be unable to phosphorylate their substrates, such as RB. RB, when it is not phosphorylated, it is active, it is repressing transcription, and it is stopping um, uh, S phase genes, for example, from turning on. So P53 will arrest the cell by induction of the P21 gene, which is a CDK inhibitor. All right, that's one example. 
Uh, let's talk about another example. P53 will bind the promoter and turn on the gene that codes for SIAH1. <clears throat> What's this protein? Well, I'll tell you what it is. It is an E3 ubiquitin ligase. So ubiquitin ligases, as we recall, are enzymes that conjugate the attachment of ubiquitin to their substrates. Typically, that sends the substrate to the proteasome for degradation. So P53 will turn on SIAH1, which will ubiquitinate its substrates, one of which is a protein called beta-catenin. What's beta-catenin? Beta-catenin has a lot of roles in the cell. One of its roles is as a transcription factor. So beta-catenin, if you recall, can actually bind the promoter of CCND1, which is the gene that codes for the cyclin D protein. So all the, my examples here are going to tie into cyclins and CDKs controlling the cell cycle. So beta-catenin is a transcription factor that can bind to the promoter and activate the gene that codes for cyclin D, cyclin D being the main cyclin that regulates the G1 to S progression. So if P53 wants to halt the cell cycle, it will uh, activate the SAH1 gene. SAH1 comes along and binds to beta-catenin, which is its substrate. SAH1 attaches ubiquitin to its substrate, beta-catenin, and beta-catenin is destroyed by the proteasome. And if that is the case, then beta-catenin will be unable to transactivate the cyclin D gene, and cyclin D levels can fall. So that is another way that B53 can control cyclins and CDKs by helping ubiquitinate the transcription factor that activates the cyclin D gene, one of them. And our final example that I'm going to give you is P3 will turn on a gene called FBXW7. This gene makes a protein that is part of a complex called SCF, which is a E3 ubiquitin ligase. So another ubiquitin ligase is activated by P53. What does this ubiquitin ligase do? It's going to conjugate ubiquitins on its substrate. It has many substrates. One of its substrates is cyclin E. And again, I'm tying all these um, regulatory mechanisms of cell cycle arrest to the cyclin CDK um, processes that control cell cycle. So if you recall, cyclin E um, binds CDK2, allowing CDK2 to phosphorylate RB, which helps progress the cell through S phase. So SCF will ubiquitolate cyclin E and destroy it. So again, P53 is able to affect the cell cycle by targeting uh, cyclin E for destruction through production of FBXW7, which again contributes to this ubiquitin ligase SCF. So these are three examples of how P53 can influence the cell cycle. There are many more examples. Those are the three I'm going to give you. So that's cell cycle arrest. Now let's talk about DNA repair. So again, there's some stressful event. P3 becomes stable and active. It has turned on all of the cell cycle arrest genes to halt the cell cycle. Now it's going to turn on genes that are involved in DNA repair. And we can go into great detail into DNA repair. I'll just give you examples of four genes that are turned on um, that are involved in DNA repair. XPC and DDB2 encode for proteins that actually excise damaged nucleotides from DNA. So they are involved in nucleotide excision repair. Again, if your DNA is damaged because, because of uh, ionizing radiation, UV rays, X-rays, gamma rays, um, carcinogens, mutagens, uh, P53 will become active and stable and turn on XPC and DDB2, which will find those uh, damaged nucleotides and excise them from the genome, which is good. P3 can also turn on the gene RRM2B, which codes for ribonucleotide reductase, an enzyme involved in synthesizing nucleotides. And again, remember, one thing that P53 can also respond to is low levels of nucleotides. If the levels of nucleotides are too low, P53 stop the cell cycle like we saw before, bind the promoter of RRMB2, activating this gene that makes ribonucleotide reductase, and now this enzyme um, helps synthesize nucleotides. So we're increasing the number of nucleotides so that we can, in fact, go through the cell cycle, S phase, um, 
as well as repair any damaged DNA. The final example I'll give you is P3 can transactivate a gene called POLH, which codes for uh, a DNA polymerase. We have evolved to encode many DNA polymerases. This DNA polymerase, DNA polymerase H, is specifically utilized by cells during DNA repair. So its uh, biochemical activities and fidelity uh, is essential in DNA repair, not regular S phase DNA replication, but specifically DNA repair DNA replication. So when you need to fix DNA, you've excised nucleotides that have been damaged, DNA polymerase H comes in and will correctly um, synthesize the DNA that has been damaged. So these are four examples of genes that can be turned on by P53. There are more genes that are involved in DNA repair. This is an example of four of them. The next group of genes that I want to talk about that's activated by P53 are pro-apoptotic genes. These are genes that um, will make proteins that will help the cell trigger apoptosis. Again, why would P53 want to destroy the cell? Well, if this damage is too great, if this, uh, we don't want to propagate any DNA damage, we, uh, the cell um, decides it can't faithfully go through the cell cycle, P53 will help destroy the cell through apoptosis. And there are two um, pathways that P53 will promote, the intrinsic pathway of apoptosis and the extrinsic pathway of apoptosis. And I, have, I will have other videos that will cover these pathways and these proteins. So I'm not going to go into great detail on what these proteins do, but I will say that for, let's say, for example, the intrinsic pathway, P53 will turn on the genes that make the proteins BAX, Puma, Noxa, APAF1. All of these proteins are involved in the intrinsic pathway of apoptosis. So the cell will be allowed to self-destruct via the inter intrinsic pathway if P3 can turn on those genes. The extrinsic pathway, uh, genes such as FAS or TRAF4, when those genes are turned on and those proteins are made, cells can then be triggered to die via the extrinsic pathway. So I'm going to cover those in much more greater detail in later videos. So these are examples of three different um, ways P53 can turn on genes and which genes they can turn on. Um, I will, in, a, in the next video, talk about the fourth uh, category of P3 target genes, the genes that actually regulate P53 in a feedback loop.